What's up, internet friends? Uh, today, I wanted to show you how are we going to build a show hide component. Uh, this is just a regular Squarespace button. As we press it, uh, the section below it is going to show. And then it's if we press it again, the section is going to hide. So how are we going to do that? that? This is what we're going to focus on in today's tutorial. We'll get this up and going. Um, but if you're curious, if you're super curious about code, JavaScript, jQuery, CSS, uh, want to go a little bit deeper with that within Squarespace, consider joining my Code Curious membership. Uh, it's $12 a month, and I send you three tutorials a week, and it's a video, and it has some code with it. And we just, we, we just go deeper into some of these other aspects. So if you really want to, if you are Code Curious, uh, feel free to join. For this session itself, we're going to learn how to do this. Next lesson, we're going to really clean up the code to make it, make it really usable for you. And then the lesson after that, we're going to learn how do we make these sections fade in, fade out, slide open, slide close. We're going to learn that. That's all going to be in the membership. Would love to have you join. Otherwise, stick around. We're going to build this component right now. All right, so let's just dive right in into how this works. Um, we could build this out. We could play around and test around and build this on Squarespace directly, but there's a lot of new things that we're going to be learning, and it just gets a little bit confusing. So in terms of learning what we're going to do, let's just quickly go over the high-level stuff we're going to be using, the jQuery that we'll be using. We'll do that in a code pen because it's a lot easier to understand, and then we'll come back, port over that code over here onto Squarespace. So as I click this button, uh, the text either says show or hide, and this section down below either shows or hides. Um, so let's go over to jQuery. So if you want to follow along with me, just type in pin.new, uh, and it'll pull up a new uh, pin for, we, for you. So I got a few elements in here. got our section. Here's just sort of our button, just an anchor link for our button, uh, and then a section with some text in there. Uh, and let's just throw in actually some CSS uh, background, light gray, just so we can sort of understand visually see, add 34 pixels of padding or something around this, uh, just so we can see our two elements. So we have our, our button right here. Uh, let's say button, let's just make that color blue so we know it's a button, right? Um, all right, so we have our button, we have our section. And what I want to do is I want to use some jQuery that as I click this button, this element, uh, the section hides or shows depending on its current state. Um, so we can use some JavaScript. now. Every single browser uses JavaScript. You can run JavaScript right in the browser. It's great. Uh, you can't do that with jQuery. You have to, jQuery is a subset of JavaScript. Uh, and so we have to load in jQuery first. So that's what I'm going to do over here. Uh, and then when, when we move this over to Squarespace, I'll show you how to do it over there. Very easy, about just as easy. Uh, so I'm just, I hit that gear icon. And in the JS tab, we just want to type in uh, jQuery. This is just loading it in. Just click the most recent one and hit save. Uh, okay, so now we can run some functions down here. So what I'm going to run first is let's just say uh, let's just say hide. Let's just figure out how do we hide a section. Well, you use our jQuery syntax, the dollar sign and then the parentheses. Then single quotes. Let's just target our section element right here, and this is going to reload and run. Uh, oh, and then we need to hide it, I guess. And then look at this. Look how simple this function is. Just hide. Just hide. That's all it is. So we've targeted that section and hidden it. Now, this is any valid CSS selector. Uh, in Squarespace, uh, every single section has a class that is equal to dot page section. So instead of section in here, we could say dot page section, and it would target that page section and hide it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. <gasps> but something's not happening because I put the dot in the class right there. So that would be the reason. So we're targeting our page section and hiding it. Uh, and if maybe we wanted to hide an element within the section, we could target our page section and then just say P within it, the paragraph tag within our section. And now just the paragraph's gone. So this hide, uh, it's pretty great. And then the opposite would be show. Now, you're not really going to see anything over here simply because, uh, because it's not... It's just running and it's already showing, uh, but we could play around with it down here in the console. So if I hit console, uh, we can just clear out whatever's in there. I can just copy this code, paste it right here. What if I said that section dot hide, hit enter, now it's hidden. That section dot show, hit enter, now it's showing. So that's how we hide and show things. So this show method. So we, ta we target something like this, and then we hide or show it. Um, 
fun. We'll come back to this. Now let's talk about how do we make something happen as we click it. Uh, so let's remove that. So what if we click our A? So let's target our anchor element right there. Dollar sign, parentheses, single quotes, A. And then on, click. Uh, so there's a bunch of different events. We call these events that we could put in right here. Uh, click is what we're using, but you could use uh, jQuery allows you to use hover, but you could also use like mouse enter as the mouse goes over it, as the mouse leaves it, as you press a key on a keyboard, all, all sorts of events we can use. Uh, but we want it to run a function afterwards. So here's the event we're listening for, uh, and then some function, parentheses, uh, curly brackets, and then we'll just break it to a new line just to make it easier on us. Uh, now we can just do that same thing we were doing earlier. Let's target our section, right? Section, and then just hide. What if we hide it, right? So now this is going to load. Nothing's going to happen initially because we're only going to hide it if we click this anchor link. So let's try that. Boom. Now it's hidden. This is pretty great. Uh, problem is, if you keep clicking it, obviously it's not going to show. It's only going to hide it as we click. Um, so how do we make something show? Well, jQuery makes this crazy easy for us. Instead of hide or instead of show, toggle. You just hit toggle. You just type in toggle. And now as we show or hide, as we click on this, it's either going to hide it if it's visible or show it if it uh, is not visible. Super easy. So this is great. So the last thing we need to do is change our text. We don't want this always showing show. We want it to say show when it's invisible and hide when it is visible. Um, so how do we do that? Well, there's another method we could use. Uh, I'll just run it down here so you can see. So you can see our text. Uh, we'll, we'll just run it right in here. How about that? How about that? Um, so let's, if we target our anchor element, again, let's use that same setup as we had before. We have this text method. Um, and then if we use parentheses afterwards and put in something else, maybe we say hide, it will change the text to hide. And so again, we don't want it always to say hide, but that's something we can do. So if we just run this in the console over there, uh, you can just see all of this. So JS, this loads up once as the page refreshes. As I make a change, all this runs just once. Uh, and if I wanted to run it again, I can just play around with it over here. So it says show right there. Let's run hide, changes to hide. Do the same thing, say show. It's going to change back to show. So we want it to toggle back and forth between that hide and show. Unfortunately, there is not a toggle text method. So we can't toggle the text. It would be great just to throw that in here, um, but we can't. It's kind of a bummer. Uh, but we do, we can look at the text. We can write some logic that looks at whatever this text is, and if it is show, then change it to hide. And if it's hide, well, let's change it back to show. Um, so how do we look at that text? Well, let's run this in the console just so you can see. So again, this is our just text method on our anchor link, if we get rid of anything in between, if we just have this opening and closing brackets, it will return whatever the current text is. So let's write an if statement. If, now let's grab that text. Let's grab what we just did here. So if this, and we know this is going to, because we just ran it, right? Uh, woo. We know this is going to return show. So if this, right here, returns, and you do have to do double, double uh, um, what is this, equal signs here for reasons I'm not going to go into now, but you do have to do double equal signs. Equals, if that equals show, then here's our if statement. If statements are if, what is the condition, and then run if that condition is true, and then we can do an else if the condition is false, uh, and put it in there. So that's kind of the structure. So now if that is true, Let's do the same thing. Let's grab our text and change it to hide. Else, else, let's grab our text and change it to show. It looks like my light over here uh, went out. Give me one second. Da, 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 da. Technical issues, technical issues. All right, I'm back. Hope the light's working again. Um, Okay, so now we have this, so we, we've finished our if statement here, so now let's test it out. So show, hide, show. So it's working, but it's not, it's not really in sync. It's not in sync here. It's saying hide when it is hidden, and it's saying show when it is showing. We want it the opposite, right? 
Uh, so why don't we just initially, because this is how we probably want it, we want it initially hidden. We want it initially hidden. So remember this runs once, it executes initially as the page loads. Uh, let's just hide this. Instead of saying toggle, let's put this outside of our click event. But instead of saying toggle, let's just say hide. You just want it to initially hide. And then we also have this click event. So show, hide, show, hide. So there we go. So now you see this is sort of the general structure that we need. What we're going to do is we're going to target our button. We're going to put a click event on it. And that click event is going to run a function. And that function is going to toggle on the section that we have targeted. It's either going to show it or hide it. And then additionally, we're going to grab our anchor link and look at the text. If the text says show, then switch the text to hide. If the text doesn't say show, then say show. And then initially hide it. So this is the general structure. Let's move this over to Squarespace. Um, and then there's a couple other tweaks we will need to do to make sure this actually works. Okay, move it on over to Squarespace. Okay, here we are on my Squarespace website to do some testing. We might need to do some testing. I don't know, we'll see. Um, first, let's get jQuery loaded. That's the first thing we need to do. So to do that, go to your settings, advanced code injection. We want to put jQuery in our header area, so in our site header area, so that we can use it on any page that we want. So just go to, go to Google, type in jQuery CDN, Go to that first option. We want the minified version of our most recent jQuery release. So just click on that, hit copy, and then paste that right back in. Okay, that's it. jQuery is now loaded. Now we can use jQuery um, on any page that we want. Okay, so let's, let's put this code somewhere, right? So I'm gonna go to pages. So here is our page right here. Uh, gonna go to the settings of that, advanced. And let's just put, because so, we're using JavaScript, and remember, everything in our page header code injection area, everything in a code block, page footer, site header, site footer, that is all run as HTML. We can only put HTML in there. So I can't just paste over this. This is in JavaScript, so CodePid knows that this is JavaScript, so I don't need to wrap this in script tags. Uh, but if I just like threw it right in here, it wouldn't execute. It would look at this and be like, oh, maybe that's just text, and so I'm just gonna run this as text. For me to get it to execute, because this is HTML, I'd need to wrap this in script tags like this, right? Boom, that is it. Uh, so that is what we're going to do over here. Let's clear out that. So let's just, let's just copy that. Um, and what we wanna do is replace our section and our anchor link with our targets on our Squarespace site. So I'm just gonna hit save on that. Um, what I wanna do, let's target our button right here. So I'm gonna turn on our block ID finder. You can grab this if you don't have this, super helpful. Uh, it's in the Chrome Web Store. Just type in Squarespace block ID finder. So click on that, go back into our advanced at our header area. Instead of A, paste in our block ID. Make sure that you're between our single quotes though. We still need our single quotes. now. We also don't want this to happen. We don't want this click event to trigger anytime someone clicks anywhere on the block. Remember, this is targeting this whole block. We only want this to happen on the anchor link within the block. So I'm gonna do space to say within, and then A, our anchor link within. So now let's just copy this and paste this everywhere we had the A. Paste it everywhere and make sure your syntax is right. Uh, where it's dollar sign, parentheses, single quotes, then our selector, and then ending single quote, parentheses. So make sure that syntax is right. Good. Now hit save. Uh, second, let's do this. Turn on our ID. Now let's do our section right here. So I'm going to copy our section. Let's go back in and kind of just do that same thing in between the single quotes. Uh, missed it there. Delete, paste, and then down here below. Okay, now let's see what happens. Well, nothing happens. Phooey. So for us to test things within Squarespace, um, it gets really cumbersome to hit this gear icon, go into advanced, change things, refresh, blah, blah, blah. That's really difficult, takes a lot of time. So what I want to do, what I like to do is grab this URL and open it into an incognito window. I've already done that over here. 
Um, and this way we can test what uh, we've run. And just all we have to do is refresh the page once. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, and we can also see any errors that are being thrown. So if our code is throwing some errors, we can see why. We can see that error. So let's do that. So we have the code in. As I click on this, it doesn't work. Uh, so something's not working over here. So let's open up our web inspector. Go to inspect. You might be familiar with this web inspector. This is our HTML, like we had in CodePen. This is all the HTML that's building the web page. Here's the CSS. Uh, and then console is where any code gets run. So what is the problem right here? Let's just, I cleared out my console. Let's refresh the page. And it looks like nothing is happening. Now, nothing is happening because, let's go back over to our code pen. This is what I believe, we'll see. Uh, our script is in the page header code injection area. And then our HTML is below it. So it's kind of like this setup right here. So let's, so it's our script is running up here, and then we have the HTML. So, what is that? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, don't worry about that. So as we click it, nothing's happening because this is saying look for our anchor link, but this is running first. This isn't really on the page yet. This hasn't been, this hasn't been documented yet. So it doesn't know that this is actually an element. It doesn't know our section is an element. So we're just kind of getting an error. It's erroring out. So what I want to do is let's write another function that's dollar sign, opening and close parentheses. And then within that, let's write function opening and close parentheses again, and then opening close curly brackets. Now this is a very, very common uh, structure when using jQuery. And all this is saying is saying, load up everything on the page, all the HTML down below, load up all of that first, and then run what we have in between our function there. So I'm just gonna put that right in there. And now, Let's see if this works. This is reference errors. Um, oh, you know, so this is probably being odd in here because um, it's probably only running our jQuery in our JS area. It's not running it in here. So let's see if we can fix that by doing what we just did. So I'm gonna grab our jQuery CDN right here and I'm going to load that in right up above. Let's see if that'll get rid of our error. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so now this is working. So this is kind of the setup that we have. We have this in our site header code injection area. This is in our page header code injection area. And this is the order, the order that this is in, right? Then we have our button and section, the HTML of the page. So all we need to do is wrap our code that we wrote in our, our, our function expression right here. So let's go back sections advanced uh, so this again looks very messy but remember what we just did remember what we did just did let's add some space dollar sign opening close parentheses a function opening close parentheses again opening close curly brackets add some space and then let's copy all of our javascript and let's put that in between because this is saying now wait for the whole page to load before we execute any of that function save. Okay, now let's take a look over on our new website. Fingers crossed, let's see if it works. Something works because you see that section that was there, it's not there anymore, That that the text section. Let's see if I can go back and, yeah, it's not showing. Uh, but either way, let's hit learn more. Let's see what happens. Well, it's just jumping around. So I hit learn more and it shows the section for a second and it shows the ran random text, but something is not working. So here is the issue um, right here in Squarespace. This is a button, obviously. This is a link and Squarespace wants this to go somewhere. As with any button that we've created, uh, this button should navigate somewhere. If we don't have anything in there, Squarespace just reloads the page. So this is just the normal function of a button. It's just reloading the page. So what I need to do I need to prevent that default behavior. I need to prevent this button from reloading the page or pointing to somewhere else because I only want this button to function as a toggle for our section. Uh, and we can do that relatively easily. So let me just show you over here. 
uh, what we're going to do. So as we're running this function, we can pass in a parameter on our click event. And that parameter, par parameter is just a bunch of stuff connected to our click event. We have access to all this data that's connected to it, uh, but it's all put into a variable. Now we're going to call this a var variable event. Uh, as you're looking around, other people might use E. It doesn't matter because it's a variable, but it holds the same data. But we can target into this variable and say prevent default. Now this is going to prevent any default behavior, that default behavior of jumping to another URL. It's going to prevent that from happening. It's not going to let that happen. And then it's going to execute this other code that we wrote below. So let's just copy that. And if that's a little bit over your head, if you're like, whoa, that's a bit too much, that's totally fine. You can just sort of copy along for now. That is OK. Uh, so I'm just going to put that variable in here, event, on our click event right there, then line break. And this is the first thing. So do remember that the order of this mat matters. You cannot put this event at the end, because then it's going to run this, um, and then it's just going to get weird. Put, put the event first. We don't want that happening. Um, OK, hit save. Let's see where we're at. Let's see where we're at. Fresh the page. Good. Learn more. Now it says show. Now it says hide. OK, so we want to also, we can just change the initial text of that to hide, right? We just want this to be hide. So this is, this is looking pretty darn good. Um, there's one other thing we need to do, though. That's probably, as you can tell, let's change this. So that says hide, now show, hide, cool. Um, this section that we're showing, it's not there. It's, it's just not here. Even if we hit edit, like we can't go in. The code still runs, and it removes this section. So eh, that's not really that great. Um, so what we want to do, the workaround for this, is let's just go into our uh, Again, this is, it's nice to test out these things in the custom CSS area. Custom CSS is different than JavaScript. It doesn't have to execute. You just kind of put it on the page and it runs, which is kind of nice. Uh, so let's target this section, right? I'm going to turn on our ID finder, target that section. Uh, and we can force it um, to display flex. We can force it to show important, right? Forcing it to show. And then when the body is not in the back end, uh, we know the back end by SQS edit mode active. Uh, we want it to, or no, I'm sorry, when the body is not, we don't want that not selector. When the body is, uh, does have the class SQS edit mode active, meaning we're in the back end, uh, then force it to show. Force it there, right? There we go. And so now we can see it there. Uh, but it will work normally here. So one other thing I want to show you, very frustrating. Uh, let's say we're in the Squarespace backend editor right here like we are. If I hit hide, it pulls me into the editor. There's really not a way to test this. And this is, honestly, this is just something very frustrating with Squarespace. If this URL isn't pointing anywhere, um, then it's just, it just opens up the web page as you click on it. Even, even a page that we have nothing on. Let's go over to, uh, let's just create maybe some, some new, the same page layout, right? Let's just jump into general. As you hit make it, it's, it just pops you into something. Um, I wish there was a workaround for that. Very frustrating. I wish there was. Uh, but it, testing this in the back end is really weird. So that's why if you're going to do testing, it works normally on the live site. So just make sure you're doing it there. OK. Hold the horses. I just figured out my logic was backwards in this. Uh, this should not say hide first. This should say show first. Uh, and we need to change around our JavaScript a little bit as well. Uh, so over here, so let's make sure this is looking right. Show, right? As I click it, it still says show. And then if I click it again, it says hide. So it means our logic is backwards. Uh, so in our sections, let's go into our advanced coder head injection here. Uh, so here we go. If the text says hide, then say show. Else, say hide. So just make sure we've switched that back around. Hit save. Let's refresh the page. Show, hide, show, hide. OK, had to get that fixed.
All right, so that is it for our tutorial. If you're curious, you wanna know more, uh, I have another additional lesson after this where I'm gonna talk about how do we make this code a lot more simple. Uh, let's say your client loves this code and we're going to, they want it to use it everywhere. We can simplify this code to make it really easy for us to use in a bunch of different areas. Uh, and then what if we wanted this to be sort of a fade in or fade out effect or slide open and slide close? I'm gonna talk about some different effects that we can use for this uh, and how do we get them to work within Squarespace. It's gonna be really fun. Uh, if you want to do that, you have to join my Curious Coder membership. It's part of my membership. It's $12 a month. It's like very little, uh, but I know member subscriptions suck. So unless you're really curious about code, uh, I wouldn't, uh, this is me talking you out of it. Like this is for Curious Coders. Be a Curious Coder. Um, but I would love to have you in here. We'll go over that other stuff. It's available. It's live now if you want that. Otherwise, uh, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you, I've answered your questions. Let me know if you have any questions about how this works um, or anything else Squarespace encoding related. Have a great day.